afternoon all on behalf of iot academy we welcome you all for the fifth session of national level faculty development program on personality development for teachers in heis let me introduce the resource person of today's session dr monica gupta recipient of leadership excellence award and the most read mba marketing writer dr monica co-founder sunstone edvesti an ex startup with a unique proposition of pay after placement in management post graduation her second startup wait edvesti has taken shape and she has completed its first assignment of the client abis business school as director and professor Dr Monica Gupta possesses more than 2 decades of academic administration teaching research and corporate experience with leading institutions such as Institute of Management Technology Pune School of Management and IMS Noida she has been contributing research papers to professional referred international and national journals and has been presenting papers at national and international conferences and seminars she has to her credit two youtube channels the channel career quick fixes offers career advice particularly to fresh graduates she possesses expertise in leading online and face to face teaching pedagogy we welcome you ma'am and with this we hand over the session to dr monica gupta ma'am please thank you so much ma'am uh, for the gracious introduction i am humbled a uh, very good afternoon faculty colleagues ladies and gentlemen it gives me immense pleasure to be interacting on the topic time and stress management as part of the 5 day ftp conducted by iot academy uh, before we proceed let us uh, set some functionalities for the session may i request uh, all of you to switch off your mobile phones or at least put them on the silent mode so that there are no distractions and uh, i would also prefer this to be an interactive session so i look towards your active participation and uh, whenever there is a doubt or a question or you disagree with me please do not hesitate to prompt me or point at that very point of time see we are all colleagues we are all in the same boat we are all faculty and uh, probably in some of the things uh, that i would be sharing you would have your own examples your own thoughts to share please be my guest so today's topic is time and stress management uh, before we proceed further a little bit about me Uh, ma'am has already given a great introduction just quickly i will go over it and uh, ma'am can you share that slide uh yes ma'am can you share the next slide please yeah is it visible ma'am yeah it is visible uh i have uh, more than 25 years of experience in hardcore academics uh when we co-founded sunstone adversity at that point of time uh in a team of about 32 professionals i was the only academicians and rest of the people were from corporate world and mostly ceos and cxos uh in the process of uh, teaching i have incubated two companies incubate uh, uh, edits of digital and edits of solutions uh, run by my students uh, they have their independent offices in noida I have traveled more than fifteen countries across the world for business and for pleasure, ma'am. Can we move to the next one? So um, now, what have I done? Well, I started my career with IMS Gazibad, moved on to IMT Gazibad, and all the institutions of repute. And in Sunstone University, which I co-founded in two thousand fourteen, the the model, as Madam said, was pay after placement, where we were aggregating. higher education or post graduate management institutions and uh, after 5 years of uh, successfully running it and providing the proof of concept uh, we exited the company in the year 2020 and then we formulated the second company which is called way the diversity and here uh, we help institutions set up uh, new institutions of higher education or universities our first project was to set up Uh, abs business school for abs engineering college ma'am we can move to the next one now i did my phd from bimtech and it was awarded by dr abdul kalam and that is why i like to mention because this is one of the uh, most cherished moments of my life when my phd was awarded by him and uh, due to sunstone university i have the uh, good privilege of having a good corporate connect 
uh, i run two youtube channels uh, i am also rated as one of the most read marketing faculty on quora uh, i write my blog which is called decoding society anytime if you have uh, interest to understand how the society is moving this is my uh, views thoughts how things are changing how the fabric of the society is changing so if you have time please go through it uh, next please ma'am so this brings me to the topic of the day time management and in fact we find in the hr parlance this is supposed to be one of the key skills that they look for in their prospective uh, candidate so whether the hr is from an higher education institution hiring a faculty like you and me or it is a person who is hiring our students who are freshers or with certain years of experience time management skill has become the key word and particularly because now it is being considered in the category of transferable skills now what do i mean by transferable skills in today's dynamic environment nothing has remained static the business world is changing fast it is propelled by the change in technology and with that the requirements of skills on the job is changing even for us as teachers we have evolved so much from the traditional face to face model that we used to follow we've moved on to the online model the hybrid model and with that with corona at the uh, you know just within days we had to switch from one particular model of teaching to another model or pedagogy of teaching we had to adapt ourselves change ourselves learn so many tools techniques to deliver meaningful effective sessions so to be able to do this and the understanding that has come with corona is that anything which is stable or which is going to remain unchanged is the change if the change is continuously happening technology is continuously uh, changing and similarly the business environment landscape and models are changing management of time becomes a key skill whatever the profile you are in and that is why it is considered as one of the transferable skills ma'am can we move to the next slide so when i say transferable skill it means that as time evolves as uh, the business landscape changes certain skills can be transformed uh, transferable from one job profile to another job profile so your basic inherent skills which should always be helpful to you in performing your job one of them is uh, time management skill other skills you may ask me problem solving skills critical skills innovative skills uh decision making skills leadership skills all these skills come under the bigger umbrella of transferable skills and under transferable skills time management skill is one of the most important one because ultimately it has a direct impact on profitability of the productivity of the individual and leading to profitability of the organization so therefore today's topic is quite relevant and pertinent and i hope i am able to do justice to this particular session now uh, may i request ma'am uh, to play the video yes ma'am this one ma'am yes ma'am can you go to the start and stop it for a while i would like to say something before we start from the beginning yeah please stop it for a second now when i was researching this topic of time management and stress management when it was given to me by iot academy uh, at that time you know uh, i looked at a lot of resources online offline and this was one video which captured my thoughts of practice and experience very aptly so i had made a small outline as to what i would like to discuss how i would like to say what i would like to say and uh, this particular video uh, very beautifully captures all my thoughts in one stretch of about 2 minutes uh, some of you may have already seen it please uh, bear with me if you have and if you have not then like me you will find it very interesting please ma'am please play it now
Ma'am, I'm not able to hear the audio. I don't know about the audience. You're not able to hear it, ma'am. Yeah, I'm not able to hear. I don't know about the audience. Audience, can you put in uh, the ch uh, chat window whether you are, it is audible or not? Yes, ma'am, it is not audible. That's the message we are receiving. It was audible a little while ago when we checked. Is it audible now, ma'am? No. Somebody has raised a hand. Uh, let me see who has raised their hand. Uh, if you have a question, please unmute yourself and please uh, come forward. Yes, uh, Mr. Abhay Patan, you have a question. Please unmute yourself. You have raised your hand. I think uh, probably he has uh, raised it inadvertently. Uh, kindly lower it if you can hear me. Ma'am, it is not audible. I think maybe you can close the window and open the link again. Sure, ma'am. Is it audible, ma'am? Yes, yes, ma'am. Can you play it from the beginning? It became audible in between. Now it stopped again. I don't know what's the problem. It is not audible, ma'am. In between, it becomes audible and suddenly we lost it. Uh, Ma'am, it is audible now. Uh, one of the audience member is saying. Can you I'll play it? And then open it again. Yeah. Is it audible now? Ma'am, let's play, uh, play it uh, the way it is. I don't think so. It is audible. But we can do one thing. Can you just stop for a moment? Yeah. So uh, the participants, uh, I apologize for this technical error. Somehow it is not becoming audible. When we ran the test at that time, it was uh, clearly audible. In any case, we will proceed further and we will not put too much time and effort in this for, uh, because we have a limited time for the session and other aspects are equally important. What I request uh, ma'am to do is to play it and request you all to read the legends. The captions are there. So you can read the captions and you will understand the story that is being told. So it is not necessary to hear it as long as you can read it. So ma'am, can you play it? And can you uh, reduce the speed of play? Can you reduce the speed of play? I'm trying now. Yeah. Uh, you'll have to go to the settings. You'll have to click the circle. Can you uh, click the circle, please? Yeah. Uh, now playback speed is there. Yes. Can you uh, make it? Yeah. 0. 0.5. Yes. Thank you so much. Now everybody will be able to read it. Thank you so much, all the participants. You are really very supportive. And thank you, ma'am. Uh, I can understand this can be very challenging, uh, such technical issues.
Now I'll read along with uh, the video being played so that uh, uh, any uh, issues, if you have in seeing the video, you would be able to know what I'm talking about. So this is a story about time management. So in this particular story, uh, there was a professor who came to his class with a one gallon glass jar. So he brought a jar with him to the cl a class that he was taking. And uh, what he did is uh, he took the jar and put some pebbles. He asked the students, is the jar full? So the students said, that just one second so he asked the students is the jar full they said yes it is full so when after the the big rocks he brought smaller rocks and then he took out a sack sack of smaller rocks and he put those rocks inside the jar and then he shook it and all those pebbles and the big rocks everything settled itself so after it settled again he asked his uh, you know students is the jar full So now you can see uh, with the big rocks and the pebbles in the jar, the professor is asking, is the jar full? And uh, most of the students uh, said a little cautiously, though, uh, that yes, uh, sir, it is full. Uh, the professor said, wait a minute. He reached down under the table and like a magician, he brought out another bag. And from this bag, he poured some sand into the jar. And now this particular sand went down into the crevices, into the space that was left between all the rocks and the pebbles. Now the sand had filled up the complete jar. And again, the professor asked his students, <clears throat> is the jar full? Well, the professor, the students say, no. So the students say no, and the professor says, yes, you are right. Give me a moment. He brings in a jar of uh, a jug of milk, and he pours that milk into the sand. And that milk also gets absorbed in the sand and into the spaces around the pebbles and the rocks. Now the professor asks the students, what is the point of this illustration? Do I want to show you what is the capacity of this jar? Do I want to show you how much this jar can hold? One of the students gets up and says, yes, sir, I know. Uh, this session is about time management. So you're trying to say that uh, you can fit everything into your daily schedule if you try hard enough. So if you schedule things properly, then you will be able to fit everything into your uh, daily uh, program. Well, then the professor says, that's not the point I was trying to illustrate by showing you big rocks, small pebbles, the sand and the milk. The point I was trying to illustrate is, and this is quite interesting, that if you do not put the big rocks first, if you do not put the big assignments, big jobs first, you will never get them all. So the learning that we take from here is not that if you try to schedule things better, if you plan better, things will happen. What is important to learn from this particular video and understand from the video is that we have to start working with the big chunk of our jobs, big uh, items that we have to fulfill. And then we have to allow time for small things. Then we will be able to schedule in such a manner. We will be successfully able to manage our times better. So you won't be able to accomplish the bigger things if you first focus on the small things. So we should start by focusing on the bigger things or the things which are more important to us. What are our priorities? And then move towards the smaller things in order to reach the purpose and the goal that we want to achieve. Now, ma'am, you can stop the video. The video is uh, 
complete from my perspective. We can move back to the PPT, to the next slide. <clears throat> so this brings me to the first point in time management that we all need to understand is first solve and first resolve your big chunks, big task. Let's say my day, I'm a faculty member. I have been assigned a new subject to teach. And for that subject, I have to start working on planning the uh, course outline. You all know that as part of our NAC approvals, uh, NRI approvals, we need to prepare a lesson plan. And after the lesson plan, we have to go towards developing each of the sessions, looking for the resources that we will be using for each of those sessions and how we are going to schedule those sessions. Now, when our task is to plan a full course, at that time, we have to break it down into big chunks. What I will do in the first step, what I will do in the second step, and then not deviate from it. Understand that this is the most important thing that I have to do. And if I'm able to clear out the big aspects of planning a particular new course, planning out what are the resources that I have to, to teach. So if I were to put up this question to the audience, maybe one of you can put it in the chat, or maybe one of you can unmute yourself and then tell me that if suppose you were given a new course to teach, then what, according to you, would be the most important and the biggest chunk, biggest task that should be performed? Ma'am, am I audible to the audience? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can the audience unmute themselves? Is that permission given to them? Yes, ma'am. I have unable to, ma'am. Okay. So may I look towards you? If suppose you have a new course to teach, what do you think is the most important chunky part of your job? Most important part of the job. Is it looking for uh, the resources online and offline? Is it preparing the outline or the lesson plan? Or is it planning each of the individual subject, uh, each of the individual sessions that you are going to take? Or is it uh, to see what is going to be the evaluation pattern, the assessment pattern? What do you think is going to be the most important, critical, and the bigger chunk of the job that you will be doing when you will be planning a new course? Very nicely put. So we have a participant, Ms. Suman, who says, first we will identify the objectives to be fulfilled for teaching this particular course and then accordingly less rest of the things will transpire thank you so much so first the main objectives and accordingly the lesson plan will be prepared thank you so much we move on to the next slide so here as part of the uh, you know the first thought the continuity is that we learn to prioritize what is First important, as Suman, Suman, Ms. Suman has pointed out, first is to identify the main objectives. What are the course outcomes with the objectives? What are the outcomes that I am looking at? According to the outcomes, I will be planning my lesson plan. So set the priorities. And even in the objectives, what is my primary objective of running this course? What do I intend to achieve? What is the outcome that I'm seeking? So what is my primary outcome? And what is my secondary outcome? So similarly, in all the tasks that I have assigned, and this is not planning time management for one day or for two days. This is the mindset that I need to carry whenever I'm going through my life that I will prioritize what is important and what is less important and accordingly take up the important things first. And as you can see, I have put a very interesting English phrase here on the PPT, eat that ugly frog first. For each one of us, whenever we are doing any task, there are certain activities which are pleasurable, which we enjoy doing, and we do them quickly. And there are certain activities which we always try to delay, postpone, because we don't enjoy them. Now, it could be a different activity for me. It could be a different activity to, for you. But as part of our time management 
thought process. The first activity you try and resolve and take up and do is the one which is the ugly frog for you. One which you do not like to do, do it first. And that way you will be able to do things much better and schedule things much better. Because what will happen, you will end up completing your small things. You will end up completing your small jobs and your big job or the ugly job or the job that you don't enjoy doing will always remain pending. Because it will be procrastinating or it will be postponed to the next day and you will keep postponing it to the next day. So eat that ugly frog first. And eat that ugly frog first means that you do those jobs first, which you do not enjoy doing. Thank you for the support, uh, Suman, ma'am. Uh, we can move to the next slide, please. I will be quick from one to another. We have a shortage of time. After time management, we have to look at stress management too. So create a to-do list. This has been really helpful for me. Uh, different methodologies are there. There is a app also available, to-do app. It will be there in your laptops. It will be there in your mobiles. Uh, you can do it uh, by writing. My Still, I'm following the traditional methodology. I have tried to use the online methodology a number of times, the apps a number of times. Somehow, I'm not able to live up to the pace. So I prefer to write down things in my diary. So go in the traditional manner, write down. And whenever a task is completed, I write against it. I cut it out and remaining tasks. So the first day starts with looking at the to-do list. And then after looking at the to-do list, I try to see which are the junky jobs, which are the smaller jobs. And then prioritize them in a category that which is to be done first, which is to be done second. And somehow, even through the experience of a startup, it was a breakneck speed we were growing, breakneck speed we were working, but we were able to keep pace with the work that was happening only because of this good habit of keeping a to-do list. So as I said, there are apps available who can support, uh, which can support you. At the same time, good old diary can always be helpful. Ma'am, next, next slide, please. Any views or thoughts here, please share. So at this point, if you have any views or thoughts, please share. Any queries still here? Any questions? All right, I'll move forward. The next thing is delegate and collaborate. Now, uh, typically, when I was going through the resources everywhere, they were just talking about delegation and delegation. But I think it's not just about delegation. I think it's also about collaborate. collaboration, collaboration with your colleagues, collaboration with your seniors, collaboration not within the same organization, collaboration outside the organization. Because if you look at the typical work scenario of a faculty member, it is not limited to teaching. It is also about documentation. It is doing extracurricular, organizing extracurricular activity, contributing to the institutional development, writing research papers, participating in FDPs as you're doing right now. So you have multiple tasks and multiple things to do. And some of the things can be delegated. Uh, if you are leading a team, you can delegate to your team members. It's a good idea. It's very difficult to delegate because you always have the tendency to think whether the other person will be able to do the way you want or not. But it's always a good idea to develop talent with you. And as you will grow in the organization only when you learn to delegate. Because as you move up the ladder in any system, whether it is higher education system or it is a corporate system, you move up the ladder, not just by doing work yourself, but helping others to do work by getting others to work. If you can get work done from others is the time when you are moving up the ladder. It's not just by doing it. For example, if part of your activities is number of activities, you have a personal problem, personal challenge, Look for help and support from your colleague. Today you will help them. Tomorrow you, they will help you. Especially when it comes to writing research papers uh, for publications, etc. It's a good idea to collaborate not only within your organization, but outside the system or institution where you are working. And this really helps out sorts of a lot of things. In fact, when you're looking at delegation and collaboration, there is a lot you can learn from others. Delegation doesn't mean that you're giving it to somebody who are, who's uh, next in line uh, to you in the hierarchy. And that person, sometimes uh, your juniors will come up with brilliant ideas, brilliant thoughts. 
um, ways of doing things in much lesser time, which probably didn't occur to you because uh, or they have access to new tools, new technologies, which they will come and suggest. So it's always a good idea to delegate and collaborate because with delegation and collaboration, so much more work can be done. Of course, it has to be used judicially and we have to be careful in choosing what to delegate and what not to delegate. And that is the question that we will be answering in the few slides that come. Next, please. So the question is, what can be delegated and what cannot be delegated? And how do I decide what is important, what is not important? How do I prioritize? This particular uh, continuum will help us understand. You see, first of all, whatever are the tasks in our to-do list can be divided into two categories. That is important and not that important. Urgent and not important. So first of all, all those tasks which fall under the category of urgent and important, well, those have to be done first. For example, uh, I got uh, uh, a request from uh, the IoT Academy to conduct this session on time and stress management. So I was traveling at that point of time and I've just arrived three days back from a 15 day vacation of Northeast. So my top priority at this point of time was to be able to prepare the session and send it to the team uh, before time so that we would not face any challenges today. And I would be mentally prepared to be taking this session. And though there were a lot of tasks in the personal domain as well as professional domain, because if you have taken a vacation for 15 days, you all know how much work piles up personally as well professionally and plus this is a married season so so many functions and uh, various activities are scheduled for which also you have to make uh, a plan and therefore so the important thing here is to understand is create this continuum and understand that those things which fall under the important category and urgent category they should be done by yourself and do it immediately eat the ugly frog Take up the ugly frog, take up the bad frog, take up the bad activity. Even if it takes time, even if you don't enjoy doing it, do it because it needs to be done. And those items which are urgent, but that are not so important, impacting the outcome of the situation or impacting the solution of the situation. So they are urgent. They need to be done immediately. But at the same time, they are not that important, not that critical to the project to the assignment, they can be delegated. And then those which are important but not urgent can be decided to do later on can be done planned. And those which are not important, not in, uh, urgent, probably it can be simply deleted from your list because neither is it important nor is it urgent to be done. Next slide, please. Any views, any suggestions, any thoughts here, any examples somebody would like to share? I'll give it a few seconds, ma'am, before I proceed further. Okay, so let me give uh, two situations to the audience. Situation A is we are in the month of December and in the month of January, you have to take up a new course. And that has been assigned to you that you have not taught in the past. It was it has been recently introduced by the university. So January, the next semester will start. The university has introduced new subject. Your dean has called you and your dean has assigned you that subject that you have the competence. Please take it up. So you have to plan. At the same time, today is 1st December and on uh, 7th of December, your institution is organizing a national level seminar for which you have taken the responsibility of inviting and follow up with the uh, participants or speakers for the day uh, in this national level seminar. So what do you think comes under the category of urgent? What comes under the category of important? What, uh, Which of these uh, come under the category of urgent? And which of these comes under the category of important? So A, we have the subject to be taught planning to be done b the seminar on 7th december subject to be taught on 1st of january we have a month's time to prepare b 
we have a seminar which is scheduled in next six days for which speakers need to be finalized. Uh, they need to be invited and the follow-up need to be done. So what according to you is urgent between the two of them? A is urgent or B is urgent? Please post in your chat windows. Can we have quick responses, please? Can we have quick responses? We are running short of time. A or B? Can we have responses either A or B? A is you have to prepare a new subject which is scheduled in January. And B is on 7th December, you have to invite speakers for, for a national level seminar organized by your institution. Which is urgent of the two? Okay, one participant says B. I will go with that. Other participants, please cheer up. I know it is time after lunch. Uh, please cheer up and please be participative. Help me here. Thank you so much. I see the response. So B is the urgent item. So we will do it ourselves and we do it immediately. Thank you so much. Can we go to the previous slides, please? I think we've skipped one slide. All right. This part we'll discuss next one, please. Thank you. The next is to minimize distractions. I think the number of distractions that we have in today's time cannot be, uh, uh, you know, compared to what it was earlier. We were, we are of the time, at least I'm of the time when there was just one TV, one channel and one distraction. But now our life is divided between four screens and these screens are very clearly the TV that we see, the mobile phone screen, the laptop screen and the cinema hall or the movie hall screen. And between these four sc uh, screens, around them, there is one more big cloud. And that cloud is the social media. Whether it is your WhatsApp, whether it is your Facebook, LinkedIn, everything requires time, effort, and energy. And in today's time, in order to re remain relevant, in order to remain viable, in order to remain in the eyes of everybody, it is important to present yourself and manage yourself in the social media as well. And that is also one part we need to build into our prioritizing and time management. Because I see many faculty members uh, across the board, they are really very good. They have been doing great work in themselves, but somehow they are not presenting the information on LinkedIn. So they are not showcasing themselves properly on LinkedIn. And uh, probably the IoT Academy will be sharing my credentials or uh, maybe we can request IoT Academy to plan a session on LinkedIn profile, how to enhance it, how to present yourself in such a manner that you appear uh, attractive, not only to recruiters, that's not the only per purpose. As an individual, when I'm working for an organization, I'm representing that organization. And when people see my LinkedIn profile, they associate the credibility of the organization with me and my credibility with the organization. So therefore, for each faculty member, that social media profile, especially of LinkedIn, should be fine-tuned, should be very, very clear and precisely done with correct English and grammar, highlighting all the strengths that I possess, what are the good qualities that I have as a professional should be presented properly and these i will say are distractions but also they are the necessity of its functioning and therefore we have to manage it along with the time that we have next please so all these activities to be done with the eye on the prize. Always remember what is the outcome. Even in NAC or any such, uh, you know, teaching pedagogy that we are following at this point of time, every time we are looking at the outcome, what is the ultimate result we are getting? And the result is the kind of reward or kind of remuneration or kind of, it could be, your reward could be uh, money or cash 
or reward could be uh, just appreciation, praise from your students. So it is not necessary that the reward is materialistic. It is It could be intangible reward. But whatever reward I'm looking at, that reward is what should be the priority for me when I'm looking at creating my to-do list and then putting it whether what is important, what is less important, and what is least important, what can be deleted from the list. Next one, please. So the first step is to manage the short term crisis and problems. Now, these are most important and urgent. For example, there is uh, a uh, altercation between students in the hostel. Now, as a faculty who is in charge, as a faculty who is responsible, this is the most important and urgent requirement where I need to leave everything, go and take care of it. Then the second thing is focus on your long-term strategies and goals. Long-term strategies and goals is about your paper writing, your publications, subjects that you're teaching, and on a continuous basis, uh, developing more and new resources for the subject that, that you are teaching. It's every time you teach a subject for the second iteration, there should be something new that you add to it rather than just repeating what you've done in the past because technology is changing, even the business model is changing. So bring in a new case, uh, bring in a new thought to your existing material or resources that you have developed. Third is avoid distractions and interruptions. There are many in our life. Uh, due to the social media and due to the four screens that I just discussed and limit your waste, ta waste of time. Waste of time has to be seen. Now, spending time with the family is not waste of time. That is as important as any other activity or way. Waste of time is when we just, you know, sort of hang around thinking what to do. And especially uh, waste of time happens, at least for me, it happens when I have to do a job which I don't like doing. So, for example, the ugly frog. I don't like to do it. And that, that is where just contemplating and thinking around, spending that uh, to getting down to do it is where I tend to waste my time. So identify which is where you are wasting time and try to cover up for that and make a tighter schedule so that you can make more time for yourself as well as for your family. Please take us to the next slide, please. Now, some of the productivity tools that help us manage our time well is one calendar. It has really helped me, uh, especially to remember so many things as reminders, whether it is in the mobile. I have uh, built in alarms for myself that this is the time I will give towards writing my paper. This is the time I will give to my YouTube channel. This much time I will give to reading uh, a novel or reading about the subject matter. So I've divided my day. Uh, between such pieces and I have put alarms in my mobile so that when the alarm rings, I know that I have to move on to the next task. At the same time, calendar helps me rem uh, remember that I have this time and stress management session scheduled for today. So two days before I will get a reminder, I am mentally prepared if I have to uh, prepare certain resources. I have to do some scheduling. I will do it accordingly. So whatever is the days, events that are there or session is starting on a particular day, the days my sessions are scheduled, timetable is planned, put it on the calendar as a reminder to yourself. Chances are you will become a better planner. Chances are you will be able to manage your time better because you have all these tools helping and supporting you. Another tool that helps increase the productivity is the Google Docs or the Google productivity suit where you have the shared documents, spreadsheets, everybody is on the same page. I think I was part of uh, the ABS I had shared. I will share a quick story. Uh, the time is running out. Uh, there was this uh, important task that every uh, faculty, at least people who are in the senior position, HODs are responsible to see that the fees are recovered from the students in time. And for that, we have a proper management system wherein the data is captured from the accounts and it is shared with the uh, HOD that these are the students, this is the amount of fees that is pending. Now, what used to happen is uh, that uh, at the HOD level, the fees used to get collected. Uh, we used to get the proof as the HODs uh, used to get 
the proof from the student yes they have submitted the fees maybe after the due date with the grace period that system mechanism i'm not going into those details i'm going going into a very specific situation so uh, the hod's are aware that it has been uh, given but accounts take certain time longer time to consolidate their data because they have the whole college to look after now they have about 5000 students 2000 students to look after while as the department level we have five six one thousand students to look after so we have the data with us much before the account gets the data or is able to consolidate so every time there is a reminder there is a mail and this information is also going to the top management certain departments data is recovered faster certain departments not there somewhere or the other there is a feeling that okay from this department the uh, fees is not being collected on time while us hod are already doing it so this kind of issue was happening in uh, the institution where i was working so i made a particular system that whenever a student there was a shared document which was created for all the students department wise with accounts and as in when the student would produce a proof to the hod or through the department or to the faculty in charge they would put the details on the common shared sheet now accounts also had the access to that particular sheet so first the hod or the uh, faculty in charge would verify it and then the account accounts would verify it and they will put checked and that name was deleted from pending use now this increased the productivity not only for accounts or uh, the department as well and even for students because time and again they are told to pay the fees which they have already paid because certain reminders are automatically generated unless and until it is resolved in the accounts it is acknowledged in the account that the fees has been collected so so many pain areas were resolved by just one activity of creating an excel sheet or a spreadsheet on google docs which was shared between the department accounts and certain columns were made for the follow-up process for the faculty in charge the life become became easier for the accounts fellow it became easier and even the student found it to be a far superior system obviously things can be improved on probably in future we can have even better mechanisms to do it but at least whatever are the tools available we can use to increase our productivity and whatever is the time that is saved can be devoted to other activities similarly using excel to plan activities whether uh, it is your uh, big events small events departmental activities using the uh, tools like mail merge etc instead of sending mails individually sending similar mail to everybody together uh, using Zoom, Meet, Teams, instead of meeting everybody phys physically, meeting online, saving time for travel for everybody. Even this particular app I found very useful. This is a music app. Now, this app is Brain FM. Maybe some of you want to try it out uh, later. Uh, this is an app which plays music, which is designed to enhance your brain's focus relaxation meditation also so whenever you're planning a session and you want peaceful thought you are looking at resources uh, when you're developing your subject etc you can play the soft music in the background this will help relax and help you focus and concentrate uh, towards the task that you're doing you're writing a research paper you're doing certain activity which requires a lot of concentration you can use this app to help and support you and of course whatsapp uh, is very very useful i'll just share one example which is for my personal life uh, professionally uh, we have been using it uh, quite frequently i'm sure in your institutions you have also been using to share timetables with the faculty members with the students so many different ways but in personal life what i have done is uh, i enjoy uh, preparing food my daughter also does that so both of us uh, we have prepared a whatsapp group between the two of us where whenever we like a recipe we post that recipe so or when we prepare something we look at a recipe on youtube we prepare the item we really like it we save it in that whatsapp uh, communication between the two of us so next time we are preparing we don't have to search it we immediately find it similarly on my personal level what i have done is i have created a whatsapp 
uh, you know, page for myself. First, uh, I added my husband in it, and then I asked, uh, then I removed it. So now I'm, I'm only the one on that particular WhatsApp page. It is my own page. All my important tasks or information that I want to remember. For example, some uh, in interesting anecdote I read on uh, the internet or on the mail, or uh, I read some interesting anecdote, uh, which I think I can use in my classes. I copy it and paste there. And whenever I'm preparing my class notes, I can quickly go there through your laptop. You can even copy it and paste it. It becomes so easy. So I use WhatsApp as a you know productivity tool. Uh, certain things, uh, frequent speeches I have to give at different occasions. So I read some uh, quote, which is interesting. I know I can use some videos I receive. That also I put in the chat. This is what I keep doing. That particular chat is only for me. And anything that is important, appealing, and interesting for me, critical for me, I put on that WhatsApp chat. And then whenever I need, I can quickly go back. I know the search terms. I can search it quickly. I can reproduce it within minutes. I can access it within minutes. Faster than I can do it on my, my laptop, I use this WhatsApp. Similarly, uh, we can put all the things in one place. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Suman, ma'am, uh, for being so participative. Uh, next slide, please. Now I come to st stress management. Here I have a different take than what typically uh, I have researched on the net. People have been saying. Uh, I won't say that I'm contrarian, but my way of looking at stress is a different perspective altogether. So let's think about it. Let's talk about it. And your views are welcome. If you disagree with me, please be open enough to say so. Uh, maybe I will learn something new. I will uh, get a new perspective myself from you. So do you think that we need to manage it? Question is, when we say stress management, do we need to manage stress really? Next slide, please. So before I move on to saying further towards the question that I asked, I rephrase the question in a different manner. Should stress be managed? That's the question I'm asking. And for that question, there is an answer in this video that I'm going to play now. Ma'am, please play the video. It's on WhatsApp I have shared with you. I hope the audio is available. Ma'am, maybe you can share uh, the presenting rights with me. I can try if uh, it is possible that I can do it. Is my screen visible, ma'am? Just a minute. Is my screen visible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. OK. Ma'am, audio uh, is audible? Audio is not audible, ma'am. Okay. Uh, let me play it some more. Is it audible, ma'am? No, ma'am, it's not audible. Okay, no worries. I'll try separately.
not audible ma'am Ma'am, is it audible now? Audible, audible, ma'am. Okay, okay. okay, thank you so much. I am okay, going to start again. Ma'am, you can take back the presentation.
Ma'am? Ma'am? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, frankly speaking, dear friends, uh, I couldn't have explained it better than the way Sadhguru did. He has done it so beautifully. Stress is not something to be managed. Uh, stress is something to be understood and the situation to be grasped in such a manner that we are able to resolve it. And it starts from time management. Because of lack of time management and proper systems, the stress is created. If we are able to manage our time better, we are managed our system better, I believe there will be no stress in our life. And on a lighter note, I would like to share a story. Ma'am, can we move towards uh, the next slide? This is about levels of stress. Uh, this is the note on which with the story I would like to end the session. And um, the story begins like this, that you pick up a hitchhiker. A hitchhiker is a person who is asking for lift. So there is a beautiful girl. She is asking for lift. You, you are a trucker. You think it's OK. Let me offer the lift. So you offer the lift to the beautiful girl. Next slide, ma'am. Suddenly, she faints inside your car or your truck. Now, you want to take her to the hospital. Now, that's stressful, isn't it? Next, please. At the hospital, they say that she's pregnant. And they congratulate you because they think that you are the father. You say you are not the father. But the girl says you are. Now, that's really getting stressful now. Next one, please. Well, then you quickly request for a DNA test to prove that you are not the father. Next, please. Your test report shows that you can't be the father since you are infertile. And probably you have been since birth. Well, next slide, please. You are relieved for a moment, but then stressed on hearing the news of your infertility. A different level of stress altogether. And the next one. On the way back home, you start thinking deeply and the message sinks in and you think about your five kids at home. Next click, please. Now that's stress, which is according to me, this is stress. Otherwise, there should be any stress in your life. And as you manage your time, so should you have no stress in your life. Thank you so much for the session, for thoughtful listening, and for the participate pa participation by the uh, members. I look forward to more such sessions with all of you in future. And I would also like to take this opportunity to thank IoT Academy for giving me this opportunity to interact with all of you. That's all from my side. The session is open for discussion now. You can unmute yes. and interact with the resource person. Or you can yes. post the questions in the chat box also. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all. Dear participants, do you have any queries? Oh, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, Durga, sir, I can hear you. You have a question.
Sir, you can post it in the chat box also, sir. Ma'am, good evening, ma'am. Ma'am, good evening, ma'am. Venkatashan, ma'am. Ma'am, good evening, ma'am. It's clear explanation, ma'am. There is no question. It's very beautiful, a clear explanation, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for inviting me, and uh, it, the pleasure has uh, all been mine. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank but you. Uh, but I am not a punctual one, ma'am. Hereafter, maybe I will try. <laughs> <laughs> there is yes, always, as I said in my session, there is always scope for improvement, and that goes for you as well as me, <laughs> for each one of us. <laughs> sure, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Ma'am, can you recap uh, what is the time management as well as stress management within a two lines or three lines, ma'am? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, it is uh, very easy to uh, do so. And uh, the most important part about time management is that we need to understand which are our important assignments, urgent assignments. We address them first, prioritize them first, create a to-do list such that prioritization and segregation of important things is done. So first we do the bigger chunks of our jobs, we complete the bigger assignment, then we look at the smaller assignment, always keeping an eye towards the outcome or the goal or the prize that is at the end of the journey. So this is about time management in two short lines. And as far as stress is concerned, my outlook is completely different. Like Sadhguru, I believe that stress is not something to be managed because we manage something which is precious to us. We manage our work, we manage our family, we manage our children we manage our playtime we manage our entertainment but stress is not something i would like to manage stress is something i would like to understand and evaluate where it originates and why it originates and probably it originates from the fact that i don't have a proper time management system or i don't have a proper system of scheduling things and that is why the stress is being created and that is what needs to be resolved super ma'am super ma'am <laughs> good ma'am thank you Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any other queries? Ma'am, as the same, uh, nowadays we have we are very busy schedule, ma'am. Yes. Um, I, I'm, I'm working as I'm working. Yes, sir. I'm studying for a government exam, ma'am. So I'm mm -hmm. managing, which is a which is a good one. Sorry, which is a biggest. Uh, what said before uh, okay ashwin ma'am can you repeat yourself again uh, because i lost your voice in between due to network yes ma'am i have a lot of schedule in my life because i am working as well yes. as i am studying for a government exam as well as in the family okay. situation, everything I want yes. to tackle, ma'am. So everything is yes. very important, which is first, right. which is second. It's not a separate. It, it has mm. a lot of um, schedules in my life, ma'am. Can you give me any clue, ma'am? I don't want to disturb yes. you, but... Uh, <laughs> no, not at all, ma'am. It's a very good question you've asked. And I believe uh, many of us uh, working women uh, cross this road sometime or the other in our career. Now, I will take my own example to explain the situation to you. I remember I started working in the year 95. And that time things were very easy for me because I just got married and uh, me and my husband and a small nuclear family with my in-laws. Everything was perfectly managed. Even if I was getting new courses, new responsibilities, I was promoted as a chef and everything was. Then uh, my daughter was born. And uh, when my daughter was born, that was the time I was in the middle of doing my post-graduation in economics because at that time, uh, uh, PhD in management was not possible. You had to do it in economics. So after MBA, I did my MBA economics. And you won't believe, ma'am, uh, I wrote my MBA economics examination on 3rd of July and my daughter was born on 5th of July. And after my daughter was born, God blessed me with a son within uh, one and a half year. And uh, as a blessing, we took it. And uh, then I registered for my PhD. Now, I was in a similar situation as you. You can imagine 
I have my job, full time job. I have two small children to take care of. My husband in a marketing job out of uh, 30 days in a month. He's away at work for 20 days. And uh, I have my PhD to pursue because if I want to grow in my career now, I need to have a um, degree in management. I have registered for it. So I am stressed in so many different ways. What I did was I prioritized. I said, what is urgent and important to me? The first thing that was important to me was my children. So there is no compromise there. I did not send my children to tuitions. I said, I go and teach other children, but I send my children to tuition. That's not done. But time is limited. What do I do? I engaged a cook. So instead of having a tutor teaching my children, I had a cook cooking for me. Maybe not as good as I will cook. Maybe not as, uh, you know, variety as I would do. But yet food for thought is more important than food for stomach. That was my first thought. Second thought was that my job is important and my PhD is important. So that means no time for socializing. No socializing, no gumoing, no going anywhere, no visiting. Focus is only three things in life. Focus is children, job, and PhD. And once this PhD is over, then you have everything that you can do. You're growing in your career. As you grow, you become senior in the system. You have the ability to delegate. You can manage your work better. Children are also growing older. They are becoming more independent. Things started getting solved on their own. But at that point of time, when I was standing, where I had two small children, responsibility of the household because husband had a difficult job and I had to do my PhD also. That is the demand. If I have to retain my job, I have to do it. At that time, these were the clear choices I made. As I said in my session also, that we need to prioritize what is urgent and what is important to us. Whatever is urgent and important, do it yourself. Whatever is urgent and not important delegate that means pass on to your husband pass on to somebody in your family who can help you do that maybe you want to go and attend a marriage and you want to buy a sari don't go and do it yourself ask your mother's help ask your friend's help it need not be the <coughs> best sari that you would have chosen for yourself but it is definitely best sari that your mother or sister has chosen for you so that's where you compromise it's urgent because you want to attend the marriage but it is not that important. So this is how we have to schedule our work into that matrix that I've shared. I'm sure the academy will share my PPT with you. If you use that matrix that I've shared, it will help a lot. Just think whether it is urgent and important, do it yourself. It is urgent and not important, delegate it to somebody in your family, colleagues, collaborate and delegate. If it is important, but it is uh, uh, urgent, sorry, it is important, but it is not urgent, then you take your time, you do it later on. Do it later, schedule a time for it. And something which is not important and not uh, uh, urgent, delete it from your life. For example, I deleted social interactions and movement for a few years in my life. I focused on my important priorities. Great, great, ma'am, excellent. I should, I should. Yeah, yeah. And another uh, thought is there. This is the time when my son was studying for his IIT uh, examination. He cleared it and he did it as a CS from IIT Guwahati. He was also struggling because he had to go to school. He had the CBSC exams to give. At that time, uh, the CBSC was also important uh, for the uh, uh, JE examination. And uh, he had his class schedule, his coaching, and then to study on his own competitive system is there. He was getting really stressed by that. Then I sat with him and I helped him prepare a timetable. I said, look, you make a timetable. Both of us will sit together and tell me which is your best subject. So he says, Max is my best subject. So you schedule a little less time for it. You schedule more time for chemistry because he did like it. As I said in my session, eat the ugly frog. First, eat what you don't like. So take up the bigger chunks. So I gave him more time in his schedule for chemistry, which he didn't enjoy because it needed mugging up and learning by rote. So he put that time in the timetable. And I also put different uh, time slots for his entertainment, time with friends, time with us, dinner time, everything we put in a chart. And we put that chart in front of him wherever he was on his study table. And I said, you follow the chart. 
start following the chart. And once he started, he may not have followed the chart 100%, but at least he was 90% there. When he was 90% there, his stress level reduced. Otherwise, it was reflecting in his general behavior all around. And he himself has started feeling that I get angry very easily, unnecessarily because of the stress. And slowly, slowly, he was able to wrap things around himself because it was suddenly in 10th only decided that he will not do commerce, he will do science. So for him, the pressure was very high. And uh, with this timetable, uh, this uh, particular thought process, so it was not so much about the timetable, it was about the thought process. When he started feeling, yes, chemistry is solved, so his confidence in himself increased. So his, uh, and his teacher's response also changed. Earlier, the teachers used to say that you are not being able to keep pace, others are doing better, and you are not, so that created stress. But slowly when they saw that, okay, chemistry is getting resolved, maths, he was already good at physics also, he was reasonably okay. So once he was able to cover this bottleneck, things started improving for him. And of course, then slowly, as you are able to manage things better, your ability to manage also improves. That is what I believe. Then you are able to figure out few things yourself. That's also wow, thing that you are wow. <laughs> Thank you so ma much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you ma'am. It was really a I think so. You are a horse rider, ma'am. <laughs> you are being too kind to me. You are being too kind. We are all women. Are all uh, Ram, Ram, Rani, Jhansi ki Rani. We have to be. We have to manage everything. Think there okay. Are no thank you, ma'am. So shall we wind up, ma'am? Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. On behalf of IoT Academy, we thank Dr. Monica Gupta for the informative, interactive, enlightening, enriching, and stimulating session, ma'am. We thank you once again for the amazing and excellent presentation. We thank you for enhancing our knowledge with the commendable presentation. It was an amazing session we've ever had. Thank you so much, ma'am. We thank you very much for your efforts, ma'am. And sorry we were not able to support you technically, and we are extremely That's okay. Proud of that. No, no, that's all right, ma'am. That's part of life. Agar troubles me hoengi, to win kaise feel hoengi? Win to tabhi feel hoengi na jab troubles hoengi. <laughs> so that's thank okay. You, we thank you very okay. much for your efforts, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Yes, uh, ma'am, you will be getting the certificate uh, on behalf of IOT. I can assure you, the certificate yes, will be given to you. The certificates will be delivered by evening, ma'am. And yeah. please submit the feedback form using the link that has been posted in the chat box. And I thank yeah. all the participants for joining the session today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a great day. Thank you, ma'am. We thank you very much for your efforts, ma'am. It was an amazing session, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all.